Wow, so how many of us took up time? How many of us practiced yesterday? We're going to pray in a few minutes. That God gave me a scripture for us to pray. We're going to be doing a prophetic intercession this morning. So, how many of us, anybody, how many of us practiced yesterday or? You know, just did something. Was anybody want to share? Anybody want to share? You can just raise your hand. So, we'll see how was it for you yesterday? All right. All right, Queenie, we'll go ahead. Queenie, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Okay, so yesterday, um, I just, it was a bit interesting. So I sat down and I was like, okay, Lord, what's going to happen today? And um, I felt like somebody was going to call me, um, someone who I had not spoken to for a very long time. So I wrote it down. And then I also, you know, I felt like, you know, a book of remembrance had been opened. So I wrote it down and um, I sent a broadcast and a client who probably had not worked with her for such a long time, just sent me a message, oh, I need to lose weight. And then we want somebody to work with. She was really sounding desperate. So I said, okay, don't worry, we'll work together. And she was even offering money that on a normal day she was not going to pay. So that was interesting. Then the second one was um, wow. a friend of mine. He's a minister. It's been a, we've not spoken in a long time. Probably we used to speak usually. So he just called and said, ah, how are you? I just thought about you. How's everything? I said, I'm fine. And while we just were talking, it just went into a, you know, it was more like for me, it was okay, this is actually the prophetic of the prophetic. And he just started to pray and declare over me and, you know, what God says. And it was like, oh my gosh. So this thing actually happens, you know. I felt so blessed yesterday. Wow. I felt like, you know, you know, God is wanting us to, to, to go in deeper, but sometimes the fears, the apprehension, and, you know, all the cares of this life. So it was, it was really, um, a wonderful one for me. And I just want to say thank you, Pia. God bless you so much. And I'm really looking forward to more experiences. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. That's so good. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That was so, so good. Wow. Glory to God. Anybody else before we move on today? I want to share your experience from yesterday. Wow, that's so good. Though. So um, for those that are joining, when um, we're talking about practicing the prophetic yesterday, um, short recap, my, what's that? Um, do you want to say something? Anybody else want to share before we move on? Julie, do you want to share? Okay, I don't understand it. Um, okay, hola. Oh, okay. All right. Anybody else? Ah, didn't we do our assignment? I mean, I was, so just one person did it. Okay. Oh, you went, oh, short recap. Oh, what um, we're talking about, practicing the prophetic. You have to watch it on YouTube. And one of the things to do in tele, pra practicing, the idea of this season of practicing for, for people is, is not so much about just trying to minister as much as, yes, you, you're going to minister, but, um, and why we say it's not so much about trying to go out and start in that, oh, I'm ministering, is because you don't want to go out using some terminologies. One of it was practice, prophesy over yourself every day. Wake up in the morning and say, okay, Father, what's going to happen today? And then write it out. Write it out. And at the end of the day, that's what she did after the call yesterday. She felt in her heart that somebody she had not spoken to in a long time was going to call her. She felt that somebody else was going to, um, someone was going to call her. Something, somebody else was going to, um, as it was a day of remembrance for her. She wrote it and then she came back and it happened. And that's what she was saying, you know. She came back and, and it happened, all right? So uh, <laughs> so that's one of the ways you can practice. Second way is practice word of knowledge. Remember how we train about word of knowledge are situations that are happening, are current situations that are happening to the person or information that is relevant to the person now will just pass. Something that you would not have known except it was revealed to you. Or right. the person that is attending to you, just try conversation. Maybe while the person is going to get your order, you're praying under your breath. And remember, you're not going to go out and say, oh, I have a word of knowledge for you. All right. Especially you know, when you are practicing or growing in this, to just strike a conversation. Ask the Lord, is this something why you pray for the person that is in your heart? For instance, if you feel like ah, this person has two children, one boy, two girls, you go try, oh wow, how are you? Are you married to your kids? 
oh yeah, um, uh, how many of them? Oh, three. So you know that, wow, that was a word of knowledge that just got confirmed. Two boys, a girl. Say, oh, wow, how do you know? Wow, amazing. Like, God bless them. Just pray. So you know you're, you're building that up. You know, especially if you're unconscious where it's, I remember I had a testimony of one pastor that was in the UK for a long time. So one of the ways the Lord helped him to, you know, evangelize us through word of knowledge, to go on the streets. I just, hi, how are you? Um, um, what's your name? Or oh, I just, um, do you have this? Do you have that? This is freaking like, how do you know? How do you know? And I said, okay, I just, it was minister, God ministered in my heart about it. Can I say word of prayer? And so it was easy for him to break through in such systems, you know, as it were. So that's, that's another way. Another way is a group. Of people and that's how we did the exchange where you can have a friend and you guys pray together and then just practice okay what's God saying and give honest feedback another is through prophetic intercession as you pray the Lord might lay people in your heart for you to pray take it seriously because you are developing and you know and it's very important okay so that's you can watch the full video yesterday In. all right and what do i mean by surrender it's not just technology in your heart remember where i started believe that god speaks to you and you have the capacity to hear god okay god speaks to you and you have the capacity to hear god all right um and we pray healing for you in jesus name. god speaks to you, you have the capacity to hear god it might not just be at that moment you're quiet right when you as you're having your back and you're addressing be open like anything can so i'm open to receive something god will say something right now and immediately note it down or or you can pick a scripture. Um, you can pick a scripture. Um, I know for of Life Church on our website, we have a portal where people can pick a promise. You can pick a scripture, meditate on it, and see how it relates in the course of the day. And I said we're going to do more activations on Saturday and tidy up prophet prophetic processing from tomorrow. Okay. Fantastic. Okay, so for I like, mine was a case of God showing me a technique of what I need to go through today. He kept highlighting the art of silence to me during the during the day. Two major, very provocative issues happened, and the way God helped me to remain silent, I would have given a response so amazing. And at that point, I remember that was highlighted for my day. Felt really excited. I don't know if it does the assignment, but yes. So it might just be a nudging. It might be a prompting. It might be, oh, don't wear that. Wear this. For example, what is in my mind is maybe you, you for a, a lady, you're not sure that your period is going to come or ID your period should not come that day. And God is allowing you to say, you know what, take that um, sanitary towel or don't wear that outfit, wear that outfit. And you're wondering why, what has that got to And just because in the course of the day, something might change or make something might alter. And you're like, oh, wow. But God nudged me too. I remember one day we we're going out. The Lord nudged me, take your umbrella. I've gone out. I'm like, oh, umbrella. And thank God we did because apparently it, that was a day it rained seriously and we needed the umbrella was useful. Okay, so it might be a nudging, it might be a prompting, it might be, oh, do this, pray about this, do that, you know. And it's so powerful. So just keep that's the thing. Remember when we did the word of knowledge um, of what gets what people's breast color. One of the things that he did for us was that you you are just trusting God, you're trusting the Lord, you know, to you're believing, you're practicing, you're engaging with Him to, and the practice is not canal. You know, when I say practice, not um to the point where I, I won't like you practicing even with a friend, practicing with yourself as you grow to practice with people occasionally. But the idea of but the one thing you should learn, then never ever minister or engage or practice based on emotionalism or from a place of often all right praise god so um this morning i want us to pray i'm going to read um the prior book the story of the prior book to us but first i want us to pray every any word you have ever received over your life just take a minute and begin to pray over it if where you are is not noisy can um team can unmute their mic and just begin to pray any prophetic word you have ever received in your life any prophetic word you've ever received. Mark, I just pray over yourself in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we thank you because we're raising 
we're, we're raising a team of amazing people, of early people that you're going to use my team in the name of Jesus. Just open your mind and begin to pray. When you guys don't know, you can unmute your mic. I pray over your life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Daddy. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. All right, great job. Let's open our book to the book of Luke 15. Luke 15. All right, the story of the prayer. Luke 15, verses 11. And Jesus said, Once there was a man with two sons. The younger son came to his father and said, Father, don't you think it's time to give me the share of the estate that belongs to me? So the father went ahead and distributed among the two sons their inheritance. Shortly afterwards, the younger son packed up all his belongings and traveled off to see the world. <laughs> What is it? Oh, I to see the world. And that's what a lot of us are doing. <laughs> to see the world. He journeyed so to a far land where he soon wasted all that was given in the binge of excitement and reckless living. With everything spent and nothing left, he grew hungry. He grew hungry for there was severe famine in the land. So he begged. Sorry. Give me a minute, please. Sorry. There was severe famine in the land. So he begged a farmer in the country to hire him. The farmer hired him and sent him to feed the pigs. The son was so famished, he was willing to even eat the slop given to the pigs because no one would feed him a thing. Humiliated, the son finally realized what he was doing and he thought, there are many workers at my father's house who have all the food they want with plenty to spare. They lack nothing. Why am I here dying of hunger, feeding these, people, these pigs and eating their slop? I want to go back home to my father's house and I will say to him, now at this point, he was already, he was repentant. Like he was, I will say to him, father, I was wrong. I've sinned against you. I will never be worthy to be called your son. Father, please father, just treat me like one of your employees. So the young son set off for home. From a long distance away, his father saw him coming dressed as a beggar and great compassion spread in his heart for his son who was returning home. So the father raised out to meet him. He swept him up his hands, hugged him dearly and kissed him kiss him over and over again with tender love. Then the son said, Father, I was wrong. I've sinned against you. I never deserve to be called your son. Just let me be. The father interrupted and said, Son, you are home now. Turning to his servant, the father said, Quick, bring me the best robe, the ve my very own robe, and I'll place it on his shoulder. Bring the ring, the seal of sonship, yeah, that the seal of sonship I'll put on his finger and bring out the best shoes you can find for, for my son. Let's prepare a great feast and celebrate for his beloved son. For this beloved son of mine was once dead, but now he's alive. Once, once he was lost, but now he's found. And everyone celebrated with overflowing joy. Now the older son was out walking in the field when his brother returned. As he approached the house, he heard the music of celebration and dancing. So he called over one of the sons and said, what's going on? The servant replied, is your younger brother is returned home and your father is throwing a party to celebrate his homecoming. The older son became angry and refused to go in and celebrate. So his father came out and pleaded with him, come and enjoy the feast son his son replied father listen how many years have i been working like a slave for you performing every duty you have asked as a sub, as a faithful son and i've never it once disobeyed you but you've never thrown me a party for my for me because of my faithfulness never once have you even given me a goat that i could feast on and celebrate my friends like he's doing now but look at this son of yours he comes back home after wasting your wealth on prostitutes reckless living and yet throwing a great feast to celebrate him the father said my son you are always with me by my side. Everything I have is yours to enjoy. It's only right to celebrate like this and be overjoyed because the, this brother of yours was once dead and gone. Now he's alive and back and with us. He was lost, but now found. Um, guys, the journey of teaching us about the rebellion and re religious song is going to be a long one. It's not something I would do in a day. I want you to understand that many of humanity's problems can be traced back to the orphan spirit. And this, look at this boy said, you know what? I want my father's, uh, I want my father's, I want my share. And he went and squandered it. Now, what I just want to talk about in terms of our gifting is a lot of us, 
are you aware that both the rebellious son, that's the one that left, and the one that was in the house, none of them, none is better. None. Because the one in the house thought he was by performance. He was trying to perform to get his father's affirmation. And that's how a lot of us are. Some of us are not rebellious, but we're religious. And religious in our mindsets, religious in our um, our mind, in how we think about the goodness of God. All right. We can live as little, big problems lead to papa or big papa lead to problems. It's our choice. So this the, the, the first orphan guy, the, sorry, the rebellious guy, the rebellious guy was angry. I've been here, God. I've been doing all these things. And that's what happened. I've been serving you. I've been here. I've been doing all these things. Why am I not married? Why don't I have the kids yet? Why is my marriage still this way? Why am I not operating? I've given my life to Christ. Look at this one that just came back. And sometimes we pitch ourselves to think we're better than certain people. Let's talk about the religious song for a moment, can we? Where we think we're walking, or you're, we're striving to get that approval of God, to get the love of God. So you think the more you prophesy, the more you walk in these giftings, the more you are, you know, I'm keeping myself holy. You know, for you, keeping yourself holy is a demand, is a requirement for sonship. Forgetting that you are holy, you should be holy because you're a son. You are not, you should not try to be holy to become a son because you're already a son. I'm going to take us through sonship. You are already a son. It is not what you do that makes you a son. And how do we even, to prove this to you, I love the fact that in scripture, in Matthew chapter three, the heavens open over Jesus and saying you are the, you are in, you are the, you are the son of God in whom God is well pleased. I'm paraphrasing now, way before he performed any miracle, way before he healed the sick, he raised the dead, way before any that none of us can say, to become a son, no, look at Jesus. You must have healed Five leprous people, um, you must cure five cancer cases, you must have built 10 mega uh, churches, you must have sent 50 children to school, and must have 5,000. Thank God none of that happened. Jesus did nothing to be affirmed. He was, he, be, he, he did, when I mean Jesus did nothing, he did not perform, he didn't do any workings, any miracle for God to say, aha, now you're a son. You are a son first before you could do anything. Please never forget that. Because what happens is, even as we engage in life, some of us, we quit how much of a son we are to the results we see in our business, in our lives, in our marriages. And that becomes frustrating because the things that you should be, you should attain, the things you should operate from sonship, not operating to be son. You are already a son. And how do you know that you're a son? The spirit of God bears witness in your heart that you are a son of God. The, the spirit of God bears witness in your heart that you're a son of God. Through the, expo through the exposure, through exposing yourself rather to the word, reading it, I want to give an answer. Go and understand what it is to be a son. Read Romans 8. Read the book of Romans and begin to explore it. It is not what you do that makes you a son. You are, once you are born again, you have been adopted as a son. I don't know if this makes sense to anybody. But what happens is, a lot of times we see people that, you know, you are... If a, a lot of, especially as regards these gifts that we are having, this desire, after a while, you think is these giftings that validate you. And that is the danger. And that's why I'm bringing this up. So if you, you say, oh, wow, wow, I can't relate to that word. Or, oh, wow, that word didn't come to pass. Yes, you should inquire, oh, my God, is it my processing? Was it the interpretation? Or was it all wrong? But it should never get you to the point to say, you know what? I don't hear God. Because my Bible says, my, my sheep will hear my voice. You hear God. So, and then if someone gives you, oh, I'm sorry, that doesn't relate. He breaks you. Oh my God, I'm not hearing God. That means, it, because hearing God, <laughs> how would I put it? Giving accurate word becomes, has become a validation of who you are. And that's wrong. That's dangerous. Meaning you only live according to the applause of men. A lot of us have the fear of men. We need to deal with this spirit of offering which can be a being rebellious or being religious. Rebellious, religious, all are influenced by this orphan spirit. The spirit that is about self. How well do I do to justify? Some of us, 
forgiving ourselves of our past. That's part of it. Rebellious, religious. You feel that there is a level of, how do you explain this? There's a level of sorrow or pain you think you need to feel to justify that you're sorry. And now can I stop you? There is no level of pain that you want to go through that will ever be able to pay for mercy. None. The only way you can be grateful for mercy is to accept mercy and give mercy. The only way you can really make a sense of what God has done is for us to accept it, become it, and give it. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. But you cannot even give mercy if you don't understand what mercy is or have received mercy. Something happened to me yesterday. And I can share because of so much the person involved. And um, I realized that the more we follow God, the more his nature has become our nature. The more we grow in the knowledge of God, the more it should impact and reflect on us. God was speaking to me about, it's not just forgiveness, but was talking about giving people a chance. I initially I couldn't wrap my head around what, what was going on. And I felt the Lord was saying to me, no, I'm talking to you, you, the disciple, not even the disciple now, you, the disciple. Will you go after the one? Will you keep going after the one? Will you keep showing mercy because you have received mercy? Ah, I say God. And I was painting some scenarios to me. Ha, I said, oh my God, this one is thoughtful. This one is thoughtful. And I just asked the Lord for mercy and asking the Lord for grace. Asking the Lord for mercy, asking the Lord for grace. Because to him that has been received, to him that has received mercy, you have to show mercy. So that boy was in the house. Hoping that the father will call him one day that come and do party. Forgetting that you have access to the party. I don't, you can de determine the party. You can control the party. Many of us are, are doing. We have access to everything the father has, but we're still trying to pay the price to access it. Whereas Christ has died. The blood is there. The, 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 he has paid the price for you to access it. So it's when the Bible says, my people press for lack of knowledge. This is a typical example. The boy was at home. So every day, but in fact, if you read other uh, commentaries, they will tell you that the guy was walking like he was a slave. He didn't have to. He was supposed to be there like his father, you know, maybe controlling things. No, he took it upon himself to go on the field, to walk that way, just to look at the father can stay. So for him, he never expressed his expectation. He was waiting for the father to say, oh, come here. You are great. Affirmation. Whereas the father is thinking, saying that, ah, me, I'm better. I didn't go and squander. So some of us are here thinking that, ah, I've kept myself as a virgin. Keep yourself as a virgin is not a, is not, is not the prerequisite that you have great marriage. If you don't sit down with God to understand that, keep yourself as a virgin. It's not a trophy unto, a trophy, trophy unto God. Keep yourself as a, as a virgin is what a son would do. Is what a son would do. Because the son delights in pleasing the father. Because when the father is pleased, he is pleased. So when we approach the law, ah, God, me, I'm not taking bribe. And you feel like God should, you know what? Paint the red, town red. That, ah, today, Tyre did not collect bribe. I mean, God rejoices over our act of, uh, everyone rejoices over our act of righteousness. But when you think that is what will make God now say, you, you are not more of a son. You don't become more of a son. You are a son. But however, you grow in your knowledge of Jesus and grow in your knowledge and understanding of what it is to be a son. How do I explain? A boy that is true. A boy that is true already. is a boy. is a man. He has the organ. He has a sexual organ. He has it. What does he do? He grows in his muscular strength. He grows in, he goes through, um, what's that thing that we go to? Puberty. He begin, his body begins to change. He gets more aware of his body. The boy is the same boy that will grow up to be 50. He has it already in him. He was just growing in it. Growing in the functionality. Growing in the knowledge of who he should be. The same thing for you. You are a son already. The son that will raise the dead is the same you. Are you growing in your knowledge of Christ Jesus? Are you growing in what it is to be a son? I'll give another example. On Sunday, I was telling you that um, just the point after the 24 hours, finding up since Thursday, I've just been wondering. Uh, just this funny thing that was happening. I'm like, ah, 
why is this happening now? Like, I don't understand. Of all the things, what was going on? And then I got to church and, you know, a few things. And I, I literally, when I was about to, I wasn't, normally when I'm about to preach, and that's the thing. And I'm, I'm doing this, I, I, I didn't feel anything. Normally, ah, most times when I'm, I'm already, you know, but I've learned, and that's a lot of us that are used to goosebumps Jesus. You must learn to know God more than goosebumps him. Else, the devil will take it against you, and then you fall into the category of being a re- religious son. You know, I'm not even going to the rebellious son because this offense rate is I probably take a week to break it down. So that I wasn't feeling, I didn't say, ah, as I was sharing with my husband, look at what is going on, look at what I'm hearing in my spirit, look at what the devil is saying, look at what I'm dealing with right now. But I, you know what I did? I praised my way through. How I remembered I'm a son. I remember that I would get on that stage. It's not what I feel to get on the stage that will deliver this word. It is the Holy Spirit in me. And I'll stay in my son's zone. I'm not going to go out of there. I'm not going to go there and try to be a performer. You know what I'll be? I'm not feeling it. So I'll get and try to whip it up to feel. After you've done this thing, I've done this by the grace of God, 15 years, you know the song that you can sing. I will, that is carnality. That's being religious. I won't do that. I'll stay in my son's zone. Understanding that the father is pleased with me. The father is cheering me on. Not because of how great I'll preach the sermon. No. But because already I'm, I'm living in the righteousness of Christ Jesus. And I'm here by grace. I stayed there. And boy, it was such a powerful service. So a lot of us don't know how to push past the feeling moment. You feel like, oh my God. I, I, when I used to pray. When I just say sha la la like this. Doorbells. Um, I, I just used to roll. You know, there's a time when you give your life choice. I say, everywhere you are going, God is just wooing you. Somebody wear yellow shirt. Say, God, God, can someone just tell me? Someone just tell you, God, tell you, you're wearing yellow shirt. Everywhere you are going, I don't know what to you. There's just this confirmation. Bah, 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 bah. Then you get to a season where maybe it's quiet. You're trying to navigate. Should I do this? Should I not do this? You don't know. What do you do in those things? Remember, always remember your son. Like, and if God has led you in his words, his silence is also leading you. You must trust it. You can rely that if I don't hear any audible word or I don't get a word of prophetic word for somebody, his Bible is word and his scripture, he will lead you to his scripture. You cannot hear a God, you cannot decipher the voice of God through a prophetic word when you have not understood, when you are not familiar with his written word. So I got up that day and was such a powerful service. So why am I sharing this with you guys? If you don't know how to navigate beyond your feelings, the devil will always cheat you out and tell you that you have stepped out. Maybe you have, do it some more. We will not be like children. We will be like this, the prophet of Baal. Elijah says, shout some more. Maybe you're going. That's what some of us are doing. Try. And that's like, when people say, I'm trying to please God. And I say, ah, why did try? Well, why don't you surrender? Surrender, ask the Lord for help. Surrender, pursue intimacy. Get to know this God. I'll end with this story. I think of Saturday, and that's one of the things I remember, and I said on Sunday, I love watching music clips. I am one of those people that I love music. I love dance. So something pop up on my, I saw something about a boy that sang on The Voice. So I saw The Voice Kids International. So I just went and I was checking it, and I was here for a bit. I was just checking their clip, and finally I was almost crying. Because for the first time, I've always seen it, but the first time I noticed the parents not the children. So these boys will come on stage. You see the parents, their hands in their mouth, they're looking, their eyes, you know, like just staring at the awesomeness of their kids and like looking at the reaction of the crowd and praying that the judges, especially when they try to still doing the blind audition, praying that the judges will turn around to just eat the buzzer and turn around. They're, they're excited to share their gift to the world. And the moment the parents turn around, my God, how you see parents jumping. I'm talking about regardless of their, their race, regardless of the race, regardless of the country, their expression of love was the same. I saw this for Latino, black, white, pink, whatever, regardless of where they were from, the expressions were the same. Even the, the voice that they're not speaking English, the expression, the father would jump, the mother would, wherever they are crying, they are jumping, they are owning themselves, or when they need more than one person to, you see when they are here to, when they're ready to turn their chair and it was it's almost time up, you see the the the, the mother or the father that is over, come on, come on, come on, come on, turn, 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 turn. And when they turn their screaming, and you know what the Lord said to me? Because that is me. You see the parents? That is me cheering you on. Oh my God. And that broke me. That broke me. 
He said, Miss, every time you get on the stage, stage of life, stage to minister, stage to counsel of one person at the corner, stage, anytime you step out to do, and not just do, anytime you are who I say you are, because those children were not just performing that day to get approval, they sing. So even if they don't get, they sing. Every time you step out to be who I've called you to be or step out to do what I've called you to do, always remember that is me right there cheering you on. Cheering you on. God is not even on the seat as a judge. He's the one cheering you on. Cheering you on, screaming, yes, you can do it. There was a boy that in, in between the performance, they couldn't hear anymore. So they had to restart his, it was already frigid. The mother went to him, held his head and spoke to him. That is the Holy Spirit speaking to you. You can do this. You can don't look at that past sin. I have, Christ has died for you. Forgive yourself. There's nothing you will do that will pay, that you need to pay for the blood. So accept it as a gift. And guess what? Walk out the salvation with fear and trembling with the help of the Holy Spirit. Surrender to me. Let me help you. I am your stand, I'm your strong guy. I am standing right here with you. You are gifted with this thing, but it's not another thing to manipulate people. So God is saying, don't show off. You don't need to show off. You don't need to make a fuss about it. You don't need to go out there and the first thing you want to do is show how gifted that you are as against how field of the spirit you are. You don't have to go there and always want to defend yourself. You see people, I, I, I am this, this is what I do. I, okay, you are quick. I want to, some of us, after people start giving, I just want to show that I'm gifted. So everywhere you go, I just have to prophesy. I just have to show you. I just have to defend myself. I just have to do this. I just have to show in life what I'm doing, what's happening in my family. What you just that is an orphan spirit. When you go to a place and you are mean, people are excited, you see that they're excited, you, you need to give them more word. Begin to and that's why I taught you about how people receive a word and then the interpretation gets wrong. Not because the word, maybe like that example of the man that told the woman, we are lost it. And the woman started shouting, yeah. And then the, you know, that's all she got. But she saw the excitement of the woman and she went on and was Mr. Preaching Rubbish. All the woman told God was, let somebody tell me yellow shirt. And all the man got was yellow shirt. But the excitement to feel needed. And that's what I said yesterday, dangers of false prophet, prophets. And so that you don't fall into that. The need, the desire to be needed. So you see, the way of people that will give you prophetic words, in a way to make it to always come back to them. Come back to the ah, ah. Got all around me, don't show me, ah, mm, mm, mm. Ah, 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 you see, it's, it's you. Mm. Anyways, I won't say more than that. <laughs> anyway, be careful. In a way to use fear and make it always come back. Be careful. Be careful. Because people most times, a lot of people, unfortunately, operate for, for, of, 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 of an spirit. We all have it too, by the way. We all have tendency to operate there. Look at that boy, he has been with the father, yet he had a religious spirit. He might not be rebellious, he might be religious. So what do you do? You daily die to it. You daily ask the Lord to expose areas of your life. I know how the Lord will tell for a long time, till now, a lot of things. And they say, me see, it's okay. It's okay, nobody knows. It's okay, it's just you and I. And the one people knows, it's okay that he knows. Celebrate it. Understand how true significance operates. All right? Because religious spirits will tell you again, when we're telling you, I oh, thank you so much for being a blessing. Yes, give God the glory. But we just will say, eh, people, the moment you, you don't want anybody to see you, you hate limelight, the moment people are telling you thank you, you begin to, you're frantic. Oh my God, I don't want, that's religious spirit. There are two extremes. You must understand how to, to, to host the presence of God and react. Because guess what? This light will shine and people, will, it will bring attention. How do you deal with the attention that comes with being a child of God? It will come. It might be at your place of work. You are just a star boy. How do you deal with it? There's an unhealthy way to deal with glory. And there's a healthy way to relate to the glory of God. And this are many more will learn. So I want to just take this home. Read that scripture again. Am I, why am I? Am I really more religious than rebellious? Or am I rebellious than more religious? Are you far away from God? You can come back home. You're never too far from God. Are you the one again? And the last days we have to deal with this because we see people get converted today, raise the dead two hours later, begin to prophesy three hours later. If you don't deal with the open spirit, you will feel bad. Ha uh ha, -uh, but I'll be here. And guys, I won't lie. I won't lie. I dealt with this one time. I dealt with it. I had to always check my spirit. I remember years ago, never for the first time in my life, I'm wondering, I've never had to compare myself. Years ago. I came on, we just social media just came on, and there was this person that did program. Uh -uh. She just came on, she do program, packed the entire place. I said, God, we have been doing this thing for many years. Lord, Lord, and God told me, what does it matter? Until it meant nothing to me, God did not, it didn't happen. Until it meant nothing to me. And I'm going to God. I'm going to God. And I say, God, this is not a good feeling. No, help me, but this is what I'm feeling. And that's one of the ways you deal with offer. Do not be religious about it and cover it up. Tell God how you're feeling. 
a time. I said, ah, God, now wow, you see people just, and now I know that is 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 the ways of God. The glory of the latter will be greater than former. Right on, right on. Let people rise. That's why it doesn't bother me. Go, let people rise. Do and the moment I feel a funny sense, I go back to God again. God, what's going on here? Is a glitch in my system. How do we deal with this? Oh God, what scripture am I going to work this out? Lord, I, rem- I remember that it's not about performance. I'm I'm your son. I am only responding by still what still worship is response to love. I only still what the one I what I treasure that's been given to me by my beloved father. So I pray for us this morning. Everyone dealing with this often spirit, either rebellious or religious, or the in-betweens. I pray for grace that will rise this morning. Some of us is religious. You don't want to be labeled. That's why you're not stepping into your gifts. It's religious, fear of men, religious. What would they say? Or people have even labeled you. Oh, look at this one. And then you're afraid. You don't want to be labeled. So you are quiet. I don't know what I'm speaking to you. You're sitting on the gifts of God. Remember 2 Timothy 1, verse 6 to 7. He says, do not be shy about the gift of God. That's why that's the God has not given the spirit of fear. He said, do not be shy about the gift of God. He has not given the spirit of fear, of power, of love, and of sound mind. Step out as led by God. Take risk as led by God. Do something. Pray for somebody. Put on your status. Pray for someone, not just to perform, but to be a blessing. Start in your family. Start with you. And the Lord will bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Um, the scripture is Luke 15, the, the scripture of the prodigal son. God bless you guys, and I'll see you tomorrow. Amen.